Hello, Paul here again today, seven collaboration activities. And we're gonna go through Tower of Cups, Consensus Decision Making, Power Plane Contest, The Communication Maze, Escape Room and Geocaching, oh, and also Debate Club. Let's get straight into it as usual. Okay, activity number one, Tower of Cups. So you're gonna allow, I would suggest, 20 minutes for this activity for the participants. Put people into groups of four, five, or six. Five is perfect, but adapt it according to the size of the class. And one thing I must explain is that in this activity, the participants are not allowed to touch the cups. If they touch the cups with their hands, they must start again, destroy the tower and start again. They have to use the string, the elastic bands or the rubber bands to build the tower. So they have to use these things to try and lift the cups and navigate the cups. So that's where the real challenge comes in. And that's why strategy and collaboration is so important in this activity. Activity number two, consensus decision-making. So I would suggest allowing 25, 30, 35 minutes for this. And it's, you're gonna provide a scenario to the participants, to one for each group. They can work on the same scenario or they can have different scenarios. For example, the scenario could be that a travel company are planning flexible hours and hybrid working. They're planning to offer this to their employees and participants have to debate the pros and cons of each of these things and they have to come up with a definite decision together and they must all agree 100% on what should be done. Should the company, for example, in this scenario, allow flexible working in hybrid hours? But there will be arguments for and against. So the participants must collaborate together. They must discuss it in detail. They're gonna to need to use active listening skills, carefully listen to each other, and they're gonna to have to work together to agree on a 100% plan. Number three, now this is a much more fun activity for participants, perhaps a nice icebreaker, great for at the beginning of a class. Maybe you can allow 20 minutes, but if you wanna allow just 10 minutes, it's fine, 15 minutes. So they're gonna make an, a paper airplane. You're gonna give them a few pieces of paper. During the 20 minutes, they're only allowed five test flights. So they can create their airplane, design it, and they can try testing it, but only five times can they test it during the 20 minutes. And at the end, they're only gonna have one flight to see how far it will go. So the longest distance will win. So this is really about teamwork because it's not just about quickly folding a piece of paper. They're gonna try and come up with a much more complex, detailed paper plane, something quite original and that really beats the rest of the team. So teamwork and really collaborating together, listening to each other, working together. If they do, they will come up with the best plane and fly the longest distance. Activity number four, the communication maze. Now this really involves trust and collaboration teamwork and as the training facilitator you're going to use chairs ropes whatever you've got really to create a little maze and you're going to need to make sure of course that it's safe so no steps should be involved make it just on one flat floor maybe one classroom or if you, if you can do it outdoors just a flat area with no dangerous obstacles this is very important of course and there needs to be a clear start and a clear end to the maze so that they know where to start and what is success so where is the end of the maze and the person navigating the maze is going to be blindfolded so the participants the other participants in their team are only going to be allowed to use verbal cues to guide them along the maze so the teams are going to need to work together to make sure they don't talk over each other make sure they listen to each other they're going to have to communicate well and you can have a few different teams competing, so it can be a time challenge as well. It's up to you how you adapt this, but it can be a lot of fun and it's good collaboration activity. Number five. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard about escape rooms. They're very popular in the UK. I'm not sure about in countries such as the US and Australia, Canada, etc. But escape rooms are very popular. And for this activity, I would actually suggest seeing if your company have any training budget available. Because if they do, then I would actually suggest using established escape rooms. The escape rooms are such great fun. They're great for collaboration, for team building, and for team bonding. So it is worth the cost. It's a great day out. Well, a great few hours out. You can do it for one hour, for two hours. 
And there are different levels of escape rooms. So if people have done escape rooms before, you can put them in the more advanced rooms. Just in case you've never been to an escape room, people get put in a room, a team of people, and they have to solve different clues and different puzzles in order to escape the room. Don't worry, you can get out because there's people monitoring the room and they just let you out if you needed to. So it's just a lot of fun. Great for collaboration and team building. Geocaching. Now this is an activity that if you're a trainer or a teacher, this takes quite a bit more preparation. So this is really something that you may or may not wish to do as an activity for collaboration. It does take quite a bit of preparation. It's ideal if you have a very large building, like very large car park, so quite a few different places where you can hide these geocaches. So a geocache is something that you're going to put somewhere and then you're going to map the coordinates for where it is located. So yeah, also by the way, if you, if, if you are near a local park and you can leave the caches there and use that as an area for geocaching. So you can set the coordinates and then you're going to allow 20 to 30 minutes for the participants to find as many of the geocaches as they can. You're going to give them the coordinates, but they have to try and locate them. They can use their smartphone to locate the caches and they have to beat the other teams to the caches. So at the end, who has got the most geocaches in the 20 minutes or 30 minutes? They will be the winners. Activity number seven, the debate club. You know, this isn't something new, but with this, they're going to work as a team, as a group. So they're not going to debate individually, but they're going to debate as a group. So they will need time beforehand to prepare. They need to collaborate to prepare their debate, decide on exactly the key points that they're going to push and they're going to debate and the argument that they're going to push in the debate. So they will need pre-planning. They need to collaborate. And one way you can do it if you have, say, 10, 15, 20 participants is you could have two teams and then each team will debate one side of the argument. So the debate could be the pros and cons of something, the pros and cons, let's say, of hybrid working. So hybrid working, the chance to work online or from the office, you have a choice, or sometimes you work from the office and sometimes you work from home. So the pros and cons of hybrid working, and you can allocate one team to debate for it and one team against. So allow the teams 10, 15 minutes to set their argument to discuss as a group, and then maybe 10 or 15 minutes to, for the actual debate. And at the end of this, I like to allow five minutes for a discussion about the strategies they used, how they collaborated together, what worked, what didn't. Quite a simple activity. So in the next video, we're going to do body language activities next. So you really might be interested in that. Um, by the way, collaboration teaching materials, training materials, we sell those. If you go onto our site, simmonsresearch.com, you will find the training activities for collaboration skills. Thank you so much for watching. Really grateful that you take the time to watch this video. Very honored that you would do that. Thank you very much. See you again soon.